Chapter 18. Still Living in the Past. Wade Garrett chuckled. He was sitting in Dalton's battered Buick and staring at the night darkened road ahead through a large hole that had been smashed through the front windshield. He shook his head. New town, same story indeed. Where in the fuck are we going now? He asked the kid. I've got somebody I want you to meet. Dalton told him, taking his eyes off the road for a moment to give him a look that said it was serious. Garrett knew what that meant. Uh-oh, he said, only half joking. A woman. They'd been catching up back at the Double Deuce over the course of the night, in between Dalton doing his job and running the club from his spot at the bar, and this was the first he'd mentioned of it. God help the kid if he'd decided that Jasper was the right town to settle down in. They pulled up to the local ER entrance. A big sign above it read, Jasper Community Hospital. Garrett had watched the kid take a fair beating from the four thugs back at the club, but he'd seemed to be dealing with it okay. Now Garrett was wondering if he shouldn't have stepped in sooner. I thought you said you were alright, he asked. I'm fine, said Dalton, a slight smirk on his face. Garrett looked back towards the hospital entrance to see a pretty blonde heading their way. She spotted Dalton, and a similar smile broke out on her face, all cute innocence. They put Garrett in mind of a pair of high school sweethearts. I fucking knew it, he said. Dalton laughed. When the woman got to the car, she leaned through the passenger window right next to Garrett. She smelled good. Hi, she said, mostly for Dalton, but looking at the older man too. Hey, Dalton returned, and they all started chuckling. For Dalton, it was because he was so happy to see that he could still surprise his old friend. For Garrett, it was because he was happy the kid was happy. And for the doc, it was just because the happiness on both their faces was infectious. Elizabeth sat beside Dalton in a booth at a local bar. The place was dark inside, the owner having turned down the lights after the other clientele had left, probably in some hope of getting rid of the last group of three that were still keeping him there while slowly sipping at their drinks. It hadn't worked. Garrett and Dalton had spent another hour after that trading war stories, and Elizabeth was happy to listen a while longer, enjoying the window into Dalton's life. 1975, Albuquerque, Garrett said, leaning on the table across from her. Got blindsided by a bottle of Jack Daniels. He looked at Dalton, who laughed around his cigarette, and Elizabeth guessed this was another story where the two warriors had fought together, strengthening their bond. Fucking around somewhere I shouldn't have been at the time. Garrett continued to look at Elizabeth. I was very drunk. The kid here got his head cracked. You got the scar. Dalton chuckled, pointing at him. Oh, I'll show you a scar. Garrett grinned back. I'll show you one I'm real sentimental about, Doc. He told Elizabeth. He got to his feet and started to unbutton his black jeans and drop his fly. For a moment, Elizabeth wanted to look away, but Dalton was beside her. She laughed and continued watching the show. Garrett peeled back one side of his jeans to reveal a six-inch scar running along his right hip bone. Probably the best place to be cut, if you must, the doctor thought absently. The wound didn't look all that old, still a darker gash than most of the healed scars she'd seen around Dalton's body. She looked up at Garrett, who seemed to be saying to her, Take a guess how that happened. She thought for a moment. A woman? She tried. Boy, was she, Garrett replied, chuckling. He tucked his black shirt back into his jeans and casually zipped up his fly before sitting back down. God, I feel like dancing, he told her out of nowhere. You like to dance, Doc? Yeah, Elizabeth said hesitantly, glancing at Dalton and wondering where this was going. 
What time is it? Garrett asked of nobody in particular. Dalton glanced at his watch and answered, Daytime, in a tone that also seemed to suggest home time. Garrett ignored the suggestion. Well, good. Then some other place has got to be open. Let's get out of here. Take this lady someplace it's a little more romantic. He stood up and pulled on his leather jacket, looking like he wouldn't take no for an answer. Let's go. Elizabeth looked to Dalton, her eyes telling him, I'll go wherever you want to go. <laughs> He's serious. Dalton laughed in return. Come on, Garrett insisted, already halfway to the door. Well, we'd better go, Elizabeth smiled, as Dalton finished his drink and helped her up from the booth. She knew she'd be happy, as long as she was with him. In other booths around the little town cafe, families were sitting down to breakfast. At their table, Garrett, Dalton and the Doc just had some coffees and a couple of beers that Garrett had been glad to find out they sold. It wasn't exactly the romantic spot he'd promised the couple, but it had a floor big enough to dance on and an old jukebox by the wall, so it was good enough. All My Exes Live in Texas was playing on the jukebox now, and Garrett was singing along with the odd Yeehaw! for good measure as he slowly toured the dock around the floor. She looked over to see a half-asleep Dalton sat in the booth, his mouth opening in a wide yawn. God, he's great coming out of the gate, but not much for stamina. Garrett joked with the dock, loud enough for the kid to hear. Dalton laughed in return, his eyes and face red from sleepiness, and, for once, too tired to respond with a quip. Garrett danced the dock back the other way across the floor. She looked up at him. Is this the part where you tell me what a great guy your friend is? She asked. No, thought Garrett. You already know that part. Not hardly, he told her instead. He spun her around and then leaned in with a hint of a mock conspiracy. This is the part where I tell you I want you all for myself. She laughed heartily in return, and Garrett had to admit that it was a beautiful laugh. Uh, yo! Dalton shouted over, finally roused. Whatever he's saying, you can be fairly sure it's a lie. As the song came to an end, George Strait explaining once more why he hung his hat in Tennessee, Garrett danced the dock back over to Dalton at the booth. He tilted her backward, and the pair of them both looked at Dalton. Don't bet on it, Garrett said, and she and the doc laughed at their in-joke. Thanks, doc, he said to her, meaning the dance, but also for making him feel young again, for a while at least. Mm-hmm, she said, hugging him before saying, Excuse me, gentlemen, and heading off to the restroom. As she walked away, the two men watched her go. That gal's got entirely too many brains to have an ass like that, Garrett told Dalton. He meant it by way of compliment. Dalton just chuckled sleepily. You got your hands full, kid, Garrett followed up. He knew Dalton was tired, but he was expecting at least some comeback. Instead, the younger man just stared off into the distance. When there was no reply after another minute, Garrett asked, What's the matter? Dalton seemed to be thinking about what to say, but struggling to say it. In the end, he just shrugged and spread his hands as if to indicate that everything was fine. Garrett knew it wasn't. You're still living in the past, he observed. The kid just stared at him as if he didn't know what he was talking about. You're a long way from Memphis. He clarified. Memphis has nothing to do with it. Dalton countered, a touch of anger in his face and voice. Garrett wondered if he'd read it wrong, or if maybe the kid himself didn't know what was making him so uneasy, so unable to let go and just be happy with this woman. She was a hell of a woman, 
Garrett could already tell. He decided the kid needed honesty, not sympathy. Bullshit, he told him. That dog won't hunt. He waited for Dalton's angry reply, but he was met with silence, a look of either realisation or resignation in his friend's eyes. I can't believe you're still dragging that shit around with you. The kid looked hurt, and Garrett softened a little. It seems to me you'd be a little more... He shrugged, thinking about who Dalton was, at his core, in spite of his often hard exterior. Philosophical about it. But that wasn't who Garrett was. And cut it the fuck loose, he concluded sternly. Now he was at a loss for how to get through to the kid, sitting there with his sad eyes, so he doubled down on the tough love. You know that fucking cunt... He caught himself, remembering how strongly Dalton had felt back then. That girl, he corrected himself, never told you she was married, did she? He asked, making it clear that he thought she was the one to blame for what happened, not Dalton. The younger man still stayed silent, reflective. And when a man sticks a gun in your face, you got two choices. You can die, or you can kill the motherfucker. Garrett's eyes and his demeanour made it clear which of those he thought was the right choice. The one the kid had made. The doc returned to the table. If she sensed any tension in the air, she didn't make it obvious. Instead, her carefree smile eased it somewhat. Garrett sat back away from Dalton, only then realising that he'd been leaning in, and gave her a half-smile back. Didn't mean to bust up the party or anything, she declared, but my shift starts in a couple of hours. Oh yeah, agreed Dalton, as if he'd only just realised the time. Thought I'd go home and get a little sleep? She clarified, looking at the two men. Aren't you guys tired? She asked, when no response came. Now there's a question, thought Garrett, thinking that he'd been tired for years now, and that sleep had never solved that problem. His aching, aging body aside, today he was tired of having had to explain to the kid once again what seemed obvious enough to him. But this girl didn't need to know all that. Dalton could share all his baggage with her in his own time, if he wanted. It would be up to her to decide whether she wanted to help him carry it or not. Garrett hoped she'd help him throw it away. Doc, he said, I'll get all the sleep I need when I'm dead. He waved his almost empty bottle of beer her way in salute. Thanks for the dance. She blew him a kiss in exchange for the thanks, and he winked one crow-footed eye at her in return. Still the charmer. The doc turned to Dalton and whispered, Bye. Talking to him like someone might when leaving their partner in bed in the morning, hoping they'd be able to find their way back to sleep. She bent down over him in the booth, and they kissed. Garrett watched, seeing that the kiss was definitely more than an act of just passion, then she grabbed her coat, ruffled Dalton's hair, and left, leaving Garrett still feeling some anger at the kid for not seeing what should have been plain and obvious, and that emotion having its edges trimmed by the happiness he felt for the pair. Garrett and Dalton didn't talk for a while after that. Garrett had told the kid what he thought, and he didn't have much else to say on the matter.